This episode of Saints Sideline Report is brought to you by Cincinnati Sub-Zero, Reconstructive Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, O'Brien's Bar and Grill, and Admiral, worn by legends since 1914. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Saints Sideline Report, where we talk one-on-one with coaches and players from your Saints and Lady Saints teams. I'm now here with the head coach of the Cincy Saints, Gavin McLeod. Now, you've won two games and you've tied a game. Yep. What have you learned so far from the first three games of the season? Um, from the first three games, really, uh, the first two showed us that if we if we play together and everyone's on the same page, you know, everyone working t- together as one collective unit, then uh, I think we've shown that we can play the type of football that we're trying to play here as a club and uh, that we're definitely capable of uh, scoring goals, um, not conceding goals and definitely winning um, most, if not all, of our games in this league. Um, our last game just at the weekend there away to FC Indiana, um, we had a few new players coming into the team who maybe haven't had as much time at practice, so uh, things during the game got a little bit disjointed. Um, and then there were a few occasions when maybe we were switching off, getting a bit fatigued later in the game. But um, overall, uh, as a team, I think uh, going forward, if everyone's always on the same page, prepared to work hard and um, play the way that that we try and train and practice. Um, I think we're uh, capable of, of putting together good performances. What's going to let us down is um, if we have those lapses in concentration, uh, a few of which happened in our game against FC Anna and resulted in the 0-0 tie this past weekend. Now, what are some strengths that you have identified with this team and what are some things that you still need to work on? Uh, some things we have to work on still, just um, with it being a new team, you're going to get some people, you know, a bit wary of the new guys who are uh, coming in. We do have a few guys who've come in who are at a very high level, so it's just getting the core of the squad who've been here for quite a while to um, to get used to how they play and then uh, vice versa with the new players um, kind of integrating themselves um, into the squad that's already been here. Um, strengths, we've definitely got a lot of technical ability. We, you know, we've got defenders who can make the tackles, um, to distribute the ball from the back. We've got midfielders who are uh, prepared to work hard, um, try and possess the, the ball um, and then um, attacking wise we've, we've definitely got um, speed, creativity uh, creativity, sorry, and uh, people who can put the ball on the goal. Um, I mean with the exception of this past weekend, uh, our first game we won 2-0 in the second game you know with a bit more time working on our team system, team shape um, in practice we were able to come out and score five in the uh, second game so um you know and only conceding one goal um so far in three games i just think uh, o- overall we do have a nice balance of uh, creativity and goal scoring um prowess going forward and uh, defensive stability um when our other teams are coming on top of us now you're fairly new as the head coach of the Cincy saints how would you describe your coaching style or your coaching philosophy um me um Despite what many people think about Scottish coaches, I'm not one of those who uh, just likes to get the ball to the defenders at the back and just thump the ball up to uh, one guy up top. I definitely like to um, possess the ball as best we can, be patient with our build-up play. Um, at some point, if you keep in the ball, the other team are going to, you know, if they can, if you can pull them out of position or if one player has a little lapse in concentration, you can definitely pull them out of position and try and exploit any spaces that they're given you so a uh, patient build up um, when we have the ball in the counter attack I like to try and do that with uh, plenty of speed and um, again just everybody being on the same page you know everyone knowing what their job is because um, although it is a team everybody has to t- take care of their job and their positional duties first and then um, overall but that just uh, blends together to give us a good solid team performance uh, on top of that, I mean, intensity, I always like to practice as hard as you're going to have to play in a game because uh, I don't really believe that if you come out and practice and you just go through the motions, that doesn't really translate to playing in a game. I feel that if you're going to come out and try and play fast with, with intensity and work hard, you've got to be doing the same thing in training. Uh, and I'm sure a few of the boys will also tell you that I'm quite fond of the conditioning side of things. So, um, again, with this club having ambitions and the players themselves having ambitions to try and push on and get up to a, a higher level I think that um, in terms of conditioning we definitely tr- try and have to be have to be at a level where 
be able to play up against the better teams up at the professional kind of standard for uh, 90 minutes, you know. So uh, overall, conditioning to me is just as important as the technical and tactical aspect of the game. And uh, although some of the boys might not enjoy doing that as much, it's uh, definitely something I feel that, that they have to do. And I definitely enjoy the pain that uh, puts them through during the training session. So I uh, quite enjoy that. Now, is there anything that surprised you since you've begun coaching this team? Uh, things that surprised me, well, I was always I was aware of some of the players who were on the team and uh, and and how gifted some of the players were before I, before I came in and uh, took over as the head coach. Um, the only real su surprise was I thought most of our players would just come from the uh, from in and around the uh, immediate Cincinnati area, but we've actually got a we've got a few players who travel down from Dayton, so it can take them about an hour and a half to get to training and games. We've even got a few who were coming from southern parts of Kentucky. So it's uh, it surprised me that as a club we were able to draw from players um, as far away as that. And that just shows, you know, the dedication that some of the players have to trying to help the club and to uh, to also keep themselves playing at a higher level and, you know, try and push themselves and the club forward uh, um, onto a higher level of soccer. Now, since these players are coming from multiple different areas, how would you describe the chemistry? Is there still a good chemistry between them boys? Um, well, most of the team have been together for um, over a year now, I think, because uh, a, lo a lot of them played outdoor um, this time last year and then played um, indoor during the winter and the early part of this year. So the main core of the team have been together uh, for quite a while. But again, with the new players coming in, the team chemistry is a work in progress. It's always going to be the case when you get new players coming in. You know, again, it takes time for, for everyone to get to know all of the uh, all of the mainstays of the team who've been here. Um, you've got time to build up trust, so that I mean, it's never t something that you want to think about. You, but you're going to have players who might not trust the new guys on the team yet until they've come in and really d displayed what are their str uh, strengths and weaknesses on the field. So, um, just having that time together, you know, the team chemistry will come the more we can get everyone together practice and the more everybody just gets used to being t together in training and at games and on the road trips as well so um, I'm uh, positive that in a few more weeks everything should have gelled together quite nicely but uh, at the moment team chemistry uh, definitely a, a work in progress. Now your next game match rather is on Saturday against Metro U23 what sort of thing are you really trying to focus on for that game? Um, well we don't have a, an MSL game for a while so our big focus at the moment is a regional tournament coming up in Kansas. So the game against Metro U23 is just, again, it gives us more time um, to to put into practice the things that we're doing out here on the training field. And for me, it lets me maybe have a look at some of the newer players who, who haven't been out to as many practices as they've just joined us. So it lets me experiment a little bit, maybe try out different formations at different tactics and uh, try and put players uh, in situations where I'm maybe demanding a bit more of them. A few guys who I'm uh, very familiar with, I can maybe try them out in different positions and demand a bit less of them. But uh, overall, it just lets me see um, how how everyone in the squad will play in a game situation that um, at the moment, because obviously with the MSL games, you're trying to play your best team so you don't want to put anyone unknown into that type of situation so it just lets me have a look at the whole squad um, in general. Well thank you so much for your time tonight and you can catch them in that game against Metro U23 on Saturday at home at 6.30 p.m.